We've got a pretty awesome episode lined up today. The plan is to head back to the neighbor's farm and try our luck on the same rocky hillside where we'd had success the previous day. Yesterday we'd come here in the afternoon when the hillside was in the shade and had taken some awesome shots on the dassies. But now that the sun is out, we're really hoping that more of them will pop out and show themselves. This may not look like a natural rock formation, and that's because it isn't. In the 1960s, this hillside was blasted away to make space for a canal that runs all the way from a massive dam further north of here and down through the farmlands as a reliable and consistent source of irrigation water. The fish river that runs through here has been the main source of water for farmers, but the canal just offers that extra volume for the big farms that need to supply all the pivots. Satellite images show just how many pivots there are in this area, and this is where we'll be hunting today, right along the bottom of this canal. So we've come out here to this awesome spot that we found yesterday, and we've changed the setup slightly this morning. What we've done is we've we fitted the monitor just to help us get focus a bit better. You know, when you're in the heat of the moment and the fine reticle like that, your eye compensates differently. And you, your eye focuses on the dust and the reticle. It up so we're hoping to get some slightly better footage today not that it was bad yesterday but i think we can improve on it uh, we're going to rotate between anton and hendrik and myself uh, just between filming shooting and spotting the rangefinder we do have quite a strong wind today from right to the left so that might affect it as well we have to take that into account but yeah the sun's out does he's like the sun so i guess it's just a matter of being patient and waiting for them to come out Hendrik lives on this farm and knows these rocks well, so he scans the hillside for movement and it's Anton who's behind the impact for the first shot of the day. Okay. The slugs we're using today are the 34 grain javelin slugs made by Patriot Outdoors. These are the slugs I've been using for the past few months out of this gun, they are awesome. I'll put a link down below to the javelin slugs, but as you can see here, they punch really hard at 75 foot pounds. How it works here is pretty simple. Whoever is spotting feeds the range and incline angle to whoever's behind the gun, who then dials the turrets, uses the monitor to get the scope cam image nice and sharp, and then lines up on the dusty. Sometimes holding under if the incline is particularly steep. Mm. Yeah, aim right between his eyes. This one has hit so hard that his head actually got knocked back and slammed against the rock. It may seem like overkill to use a 34 grain hollow point slug at a thousand feet per second, but it's not just about terminal energy, it's actually about ballistic coefficient. Backing the strong crosswind and being able to shoot really flat is a huge advantage. This one again hits really hard, right between the eyes. The wind seems to almost do nothing, even from about 50 yards, and his one eye actually pops right out of his socket here from the hydraulic shock in his skull cavity. People think I'm morbid <laughs> for wanting to show these things and, and being interested in them, but it's actually just curiosity. I enjoy the physics behind what's going on here. Dussies love to come out and sun themselves in the mornings when the rocks start to heat up. This is normally the best time of day to hunt dussies. I think the strong wind probably kept many of them down their holes. Dussies don't really like the wind, but with a setup like this, we were pretty much guaranteed to get down every dussy that did give us an opportunity. I held under for this shot, aiming on the nose and hitting right on the forehead. These javelin slugs are made of pure lead and have a massive hollow point. The idea is that they dump all their energy at once on small games so that they don't leave the animal with much energy remaining. And that's exactly what we see here with pieces of skull flying pretty much all over the place. It isn't pretty, but it is super humane. And with headshots, there's no meat damage to worry about, which is an extra bonus. So some of these shots are at a bit of an incline. And I know from looking at yesterday's footage that uh, some of those slugs traveled a bit higher than where I aimed. So today I've been aiming a little bit lower so just below between the eyes more towards the nose um, with the amount of energy that these slugs carry even if you you miss the brain and kind of hit low on the nose area in the middle of the face 
it still does more than enough damage to kill it instantly so um, it's not like when you're using like a 30 foot pound air rifle and then you have to have to get on the brain um, with these slugs it's a lot more forgiving and even with the wind today there's quite a lot of wind but even though these shots are close to like 40 50 meters the wind has very little effect on the slugs if, I, if we were using pellets we would have to range every single shot and it, it cook it at the wind for every single shot but with the slugs we can have a little bit more freedom to you know take a few chances because not only are they a lot more forgiving with shot placement but they're also a lot less affected by conditions as mentioned in the previous video dussies are very well camouflaged amongst these rocks and it can be very difficult to spot them there are often periods when there is no action for a while and you have to just wait it out one shows up at 85 meters i dial to 85 on the nexus scope mm, listen to those crisp clicks and I take my time on this one because I have to weave the slug between a rock and a piece of old steel cable. I want to try to weave through that thing, get him in the heart and lungs or something. <laughs> Got him. I don't often take heart and lung shots on dassies, but this one didn't really give me an option. And as you can see, point of impact was spot on and the slug did its job perfectly. With no more dussies showing up at the spot, we moved just a little down the road with Anton freewheeling the bucky so as not to make any noise and we moved towards a promising looking patch of rocks just a couple hundred meters away. So we just uh, moved a little bit along the rock face here. Anton just freewheeled the bucky down a bit. We set up at a new spot. Um, the rock formations here look really good so we're going to wait and see how it turns out. Uh, hopefully we can get a few more. Right. There's still one, the first place that I showed you. Remember the first place? This could have been a two-in-one sequence. I nailed the first shot here, but you can see I hold under correctly for the first one. The slug travels high and impacts where I want it to. The slug is dead stable all the way to the head and expands nicely, passing through and making a mark on the rock behind. I totally forget to hold under for the next shot though. I should have held about three quarter mils under, but the slug passes over his head. Can't blame my equipment for these errors, this one's totally on me. This was without a doubt the most brutal shot of the day. The slug passes through the head, popping both eyes out and then continues into the body because of the angle, pushing a big puff of dust off of the fur as the shockwave travels through the body. Once again, not a pretty sight, but super humane and effective. I think we're going to pretty much... Uh call it there the wind is picked up now it's it's gusting up to like 20 miles an hour you won't hear it because this camera has got a very good uh, wind protector on the mark but it's blowing hard plus we have to get back to the farmhouse for like a mother's day lunch so yeah let's uh, call it there let's get the dassies and let's take a break and then this afternoon we'll see if we can go out for some monkeys and Maybe some guinea fowl and geese and a few things like that with the firearms, but I think our air gun hunting with this wind picking up is probably done for today. <laughs> of course, none of these go to waste as usual. We collect them up from in between the rocks, or at least collect up as many as we can. There are always a few that are too deep between the cracks to actually retrieve, but with a good number of animals, we are super happy with the morning's events. Well, we had a, an amazing evening yesterday at these rocks here shooting dussies. If you haven't seen that video yet, or uh, if I've put it in a separate video, I'll, I'll link it down below. I still don't know how I'm going to structure these videos, but awesome evening yesterday. Decided to come out here again this morning. Uh, the sun is now on that side, so the whole the, the rocks are all uh, lit up by the sun. And the dusties love to come out in the mornings to sun themselves. I think maybe there, there would have been more if it wasn't so windy. Uh, I don't know if dusties enjoy the wind too much. But nonetheless, we, we managed to get a few down. Some awesome shots on camera. We spent a little bit more time this morning making sure that everything was in focus. So hopefully the scope cam footage turns out okay. And I think we ended up getting like seven dussies or something in total. We, we Obviously some of them fell down the holes and stuff. And those holes are so deep we can't uh, retrieve them. But it's nice to get these down. And the farm workers will be extremely grateful for that. So... We're going to head uh, back to the house now, maybe have some lunch, and then in the afternoon, maybe see if we can get some monkeys and some geese and stuff like that. But once again, I want to say thanks to these guys uh, for taking me out here. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, it's good to, good to have friends with 
uh, with beautiful properties like this. It's really, really awesome. I'm glad we could get this footage for you guys. After lunch, we head out for some spontaneous vomiting. We got quite a lot of monkeys down, but I'm going to leave all the monkey hunting footage for another episode. For now, we're going after the ground squirrels. We head up a dam wall where we had seen some squirrels the day before, and we do manage to get one down from about 25 yards. A nice easy shot. The ground squirrels aren't really playing along today, so we decide to head back to the lands. These trains that come through here are some of the longest I've ever seen. Fun fact, Transnet, which is our state-owned railway company here in South Africa, actually has the longest train in the world at 4 kilometers long with 375 wagons. That is absolutely insane. Another fun fact though, and I think you're going to enjoy this one. Once upon a time on this exact railway line in the late 1800s, there was a man named Jumper who worked for the railway and used to jump between trains. When Jumper lost both of his legs in a railway accident, he bought a baboon named Jack and trained it to push his wheelchair around and eventually to change signals. After initial skepticism, Jack was officially employed by the railway and paid 20 cents a day plus half a bottle of beer each week. And they say that Jack never made a mistake in the nine years that he worked for the railway company. He eventually died of tuberculosis, but his skull is on display at a railway museum close by. These are the kind of things that only happen in Africa. <laughs> anyway, back to the shooting. I spot some guinea fowl in the lands and decide to take a couple shots and spoiler alert, I miss all of them. I don't understand why, I think either the bipod was jumping on the bonnet of the truck, causing the shots to hit high, or maybe my 260 was just not shooting well. But either way, this rifle has not been its usual accurate self over the past few days and I can't understand it. It was perfectly fine until I gave the barrel a good clean and now it's just all over the place. Moral of the story, if it's not broken, don't try to fix it. <laughs> Anyway, that's where I'm going to end this video. Do not miss the next one. We've got the ultimate compilation of monkey hunting with the air guns and the 22-250 coming up. So hit subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.